Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all an update to my Satellar Knight Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for post the December 2022 ban list. We got the Teller Knight Ptolemaeus off of the ban list. It was more of a win condition type of card. I guess they thought maybe it was just too slow now for the play style that it was meant to use, but you can still use it pretty well just as a sort of gimmicky setup in the Satellar Knight deck. So with the change and the other couple changes I've made to the Satellar deck since the last update. I definitely thought an update for the deck was due. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the Satellarite monsters, all of them focus on either searching, special summoning out many different Satellarite monsters onto the field. So you can go into your main play style, which are the rank four uh, Tellarite monsters. So Tellarite Ptolemaeus fits into the same category as the other cards. For the Satellarite monsters, we're running three copies of Satellarite Deneb. If it's summoned, you can add one Tellarite monster from your deck to your hand, except for Tellarite Deneb. And you're going to use each effect of Satellarite Deneb once per turn. It's search power you can even summon it on your opponent's turn and get that search you can make use of your other satellar knight monsters to special summon onto the field and just keep that search going so you have consistency for all your many monsters i also run three satellar knight altair if this card is summoned you can target one teller knight monster in your graveyard except for satellar knight altair special summon it in defense and also monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn except for teller knight monsters you can only use each effect of satellar knight altair once per turn so the good majority of the monsters that we run in the extra deck are Teller Knight monsters, so we're really not limited with, uh, you know, Altair Special Sun effect for the deck, but still three copies just because you have a search, thanks to cards like Deneb, to add to your hand, and then just another special summon that can get you a resource on the field, and when you combine it with cards like Dark Teller Knight and Botslemaeus, you have the option to go into any of your other Teller Knight Xyz monsters. I also run three copies of Satellar Knight Uno Kahai. This is more set up in the graveyard. You can even just send Deneb to the graveyard with Uno Kahai and special summon it back onto the field to get another search. Just when it's summoned, you can send one Teller Knight card from your deck to the graveyard. It's just that search and setup, depending on what Satellar Knight monster you want to send to the graveyard to begin with. I also, for some of the lower numbers, run two copies of Satellar Knight Vega. If it's summoned, you can special summon one Teller Knight monster from your hand, except for Vega. You can only use this effect of Vega once per turn. So if you have that other monster, that's the big thing here. Things like Altair and Unal Kahai definitely focus on the graveyard setup, which using the deck and monsters that are already in the graveyard is a lot more consistent. That's why I'm just running two copies of Vega because you have to have the monster in your hand to resolve this card. So you can summon out cards like Deneb and get that other search, but then you're utilizing the Deneb more than the actual Vega after that special summon. And I also run one Satellar Knight All Sam and one Satellar Knight Sirius. Sirius for the recycle power and then being able to draw a card by shuffling five Tower Knight monsters in the graveyard back into the deck. And all Sam, every time it's summoned, you can inflict 1,000 points of damage to your opponent. Burn damage is pretty good just for, you know, dwindling down your opponent's life points. But Sirius being able to also shuffle back the extra deck monsters means we can make use of those big plays thanks to this one monster. That is it for the main deck monsters. Just focusing on the Tower Knight lineup, I find to be the most consistent. No hand traps for the monsters. We're sticking mostly to the trap lineup because cards like Satellar Knight Trever can bounce back continuous traps back to our hand if they're already face up on the field by being able to bounce everything on the field but we'll get to that when we go over the extra deck monsters. For the spells I run two copies of Satellar Knight Skybridge. You target a Teller Knight monster you control on the field. Special summon one with a different name from your deck and then shuffle that other target back. So if you have one let's say that doesn't really do much this spell at least adds for consistency to get a proper Satellar Knight monster and then taking the other one back into the deck and gaining that additional effect. It does lock you into only Tower Knight monsters for special summoning, but like I said, it's a good majority of the extra decks. So we're really not limited to those summons thanks to this card. I also run two copies of Pot of Prosperity. I know this is more of a pricey card. If you don't have it, you can run Pot of Desires. We run plenty of play sets for a good majority of the many different cards, just for the draw power and for the fact that we are running multiple copies of the Satellar Knight monsters. So when it comes to banishing, we can banish a good number of them and search cards we need from the top of our deck for any of our plays. The monster lineup search is definitely important because of that, and Prosperity just helps for that consistency back. And for the rest of the spells, one monster born once again just being able to summon cards like Altair, Deneb, and Unal Kahai or Vega back onto the field and gain their monster effects since they just have to be summoned is always useful for Monster Reborn, Call by the Grave to stop our opponent's graveyard plays, and one reinforcements of the army being able to search out any of the Teller Knight main deck monsters to our hand. 
that is it for the spells. We run a pretty low spell count just because the traps do take up a big part of the lineup. For the traps, we are running three copies of Stellar Nova Alpha. When a spell or trap or monster effect is activated, send one face of Tile Knight monster you control to the graveyard, negate the activation. If you do destroy that card, then draw one card. So you have draw power thanks to this counter trap, which set up, you know, turn one can definitely be good because if your opponent tries to evenly match your back row or anything like that, as long as you have that Tile Knight monster on the field, you can send it to the graveyard and stop that and gain an additional draw because if the card is still on the field when you negate the effect and destroy it you get to draw i also run three call by the grave <laughs> call by the grave call of the haunted this is just for more summoning being able to summon out a monster onto the field and then overlay into it will make call of the haunted dead on the field as just a you know trap that's no longer equipped onto a monster but then you can use cards like tower knight triver to bounce it back to your hand so then you have a call of the haunted that you can reset and reuse again and i also run three copies of fiendish chain it's the same premise with this card just being able to target an effect monster on the field negates effects and then while it's on the field that face up monster can't attack once again if your opponent gets rid of that monster and this card's just sitting face up and down on the field you can just bounce it back to your hand with cards like traver and set it up again on the field and then once again same goes for crackdown this is great because you can use your opponent's resource and have it that way and then just bounce it back to your hand again and that's really big play we went for with the continuous traps it definitely does come in handy for all of them and the last one being anti-spell fragrance two of them we don't run too many spells most of them are just set up to begin with so if we use them we're not going to need any more spells for any of our plays in the deck but we can shut down a good majority of the plays that our opponent may try to do and for the other traps i run three infinite impermanence just a good going second option with all of the traps that we run to activate against our opponent's monsters on the field negating it and still having that option for the following turn to set up more traps and lastly three drowning mirror force this is one of my favorites because you can leave your field empty depending on what setup you go for if you use stellar nova alpha and send the only monster you control to the graveyard you'll have the draw but then you'll most likely have no other monsters on the field depending on what your setup was so you can at least have this card to rely on shuffling back your opponent's pesky monsters back into the deck and it can take away from a lot because there are a lot of monsters currently that rely on being destroyed by battle or card effects to gain additional card effects and that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extracts. I have one copy of Teller Knight Ptolemaeus. I know this card is now at three. If you wanted to try multiple copies, you can. It's more of just a, like I said before, gimmicky setup play style type of card, needing two or more level four monsters. So even if you use cards like Crackdown to take one of your opponent's monsters, you can use that level four monster as an Xyz player for this card. Once per chain during either player's turn, you can detach three Xyz material from this card to special summon from your extra deck one Xyz monster. That is one rank higher than this card except for a number monster by using this card as face up materials you control as exceeds material this is treated as an exceed summon and also attach the exceed materials on this card to the new monster and then you can detach seven from this card to skip your opponent's next turn and during either player's end phase you can detach one satellite knight card from your extra deck to this card's face of material we have plenty of satellite knight monsters and being able to use them for the stellar knights in the extra deck to summon out this card the rank up play revolves around stellar knight can stellar diamond to summon out this this card onto the field so that can be a bigger play thanks to this during the main phase two being able to exceed summon it using a tower knight exceeds monster or just using ptolemy's quick effect to go into it as well you have this control option thanks to this card and the additional setup for the potential to get an additional turn because you could use five monsters that are on the field you have the extra monster zone to rely on your already exceeds summon monster to attach onto it you have plenty of available options for this card and how many exceeds materials you can get on it I also run two Stellar Knight Deltaros. This is the destruction card, being able to detach one from it. And it needs three level four monsters, but you can easily summon it using cards like Dark Teller Knight, Botsalimaeus instead. But with this card also, your opponent cannot activate card effects uh, when it uh, activates the effect or while it has exceeds material. Very, very strong for a 2500 attack point monster. And when it's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Teller Knight monster from your hand or deck, continuing these special summoning plays. I also run the two Triver. This is the bounce effect when it's summon to bounce all the cards on the field that's why i spoke of before with your continuous traps being able just to bounce them back on to your hand if they're dead on the field and already been used and then reset them up again and being able to detach one from Traver to discard a random card out of your opponent's hand and when it's sent to the graveyard you can target one talent monster in your graveyard and special summon it so you have the hand or deck option thanks to Deltaros and Traver for the graveyard i have the two satellar knight constellar diamond this is the overlay card you want to use with the ptolemaeus 
this on the field as well. And with this card during main phase two, you can also exceed summon it using a Tower Knight Xyz monster. You control his Xyz material, except for Diamond. Xyz material attached to that monster become this one's Xyz material. And while this card is Xyz material, neither player can send cards from the deck to the graveyard. This can be the Ptolemaeus play and set up just being able to go right into Diamond and shut down the send option that your opponent may have it is a pretty strong option for what you can use this card for. It just shuts down a lot of what we have available in the current format. And I also run three copies of Dark Talon Knight, Bat Lemaeus. This is the one that just needs two level four Stellar Knight monsters. And then you can detach one from this card and send a card from your hand to the graveyard to overlay into another Stellar Knight monster. So just having two means you still have access to either Traver or Deltaros using just this one monster and two Stellar Knight monsters that you control. And then for more of the generic options, I run one Star Leech Paladynamo, one Baguska, one Tornado Dragon, one Abyss Dweller, and one Sky Thunder. I know cards like Altair and also our Satellar Knight Skybridge lock us into Satellar Knights for the good most part. But even if you use these generic ones to be banished for cards like Pot of Prosperity, or you come into the option where you can use them, cards like Zeus, you just have to have an Xyz monster attack and then you can overlay into it. But remember, you'll be stuck in special summoning if you did use Skybridge and that other monster is still on the field. So go into your other Satellar Knight monster first before making it and going for that attack also. As for some of the go-to plays now, you can do with the Satellar monsters. Same plays as before. Nothing's really changed. We've gained the additional option with Ptolemaeus. So with this, you have the play to go into for your setup being able to just summon out some of your go-to plays, whether it be your setup. You can go into Satellar Knight Vega and then use Vega to summon out your Deneb. Deneb can have the search power to search out your Altair. If you have the graveyard set up already, the big play will come down to when you can get it out for or your Ptolemaeus, but even just these two material, like I said before, can be overlaid into your Ptolemaeus. The detach from there can be the other discard from your hand, and then you can go into either one of your bigger Satellite monsters on the field thanks to this card. If you're going for more of the setup with your monster being your Ptolemaeus, you just need the two or more level four monsters to make this card. So even with that play, you can go for the Vega and the Deneb play, getting the additional search to your hand, overlaying these two into the Ptolemaeus. And then with this card, being able to attach one during either player's end phase, you can attach one Satellar Knight monster onto this card. And with that, you have your detached three to then go into your diamond and shut down all the send plays your opponent may try to use as well. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, it was very surprising that we got this new ban list with Ptolemaeus off of the list. But I hope you all enjoyed the update to the Satellar Knight deck with this new support. And as always, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.